to the first podcast episode of Radiology AI. My name is Dania Day, and I'm the Associate Editor for Social Media for Radiology AI. Today, we're very excited to launch our podcast series for the journal. The purpose of uh, our series is to discuss the science and emerging applications of AI in radiology. We will achieve this goal by highlighting the articles published in the journal through interviewing many of our authors and a number of leaders in the field of artificial intelligence. The podcast will be taking place every other month in its first period. Please rate, review, and subscribe to our new podcast series on any of iTunes, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. It is my pleasure today to introduce my co-host for the podcast, Dr. Paul Yi. Paul is a fourth-year radiology resident at Johns Hopkins University and a member of the Radiology AI Trainee Editorial Board. Today, we launch the podcast series, and Paul will be interviewing Dr. Chuck Kahn, who is the editor for Radiology AI and professor of radiology at the University of Pennsylvania. Paul, I will turn it over to you now. Um, thanks for the introduction, Danya, and a special thank you to Dr. Khan for joining us here on the podcast today. Um, yeah, so Dr. Khan, you um, have been involved with informatics and radiology um, for quite a while now. You're the vice chairman of radiology at Penn, um, you're a fellow of SIN, and now you're the editor for Radiology AI. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got interested and involved with AI and radiology? Sure. Well, first, I just want to say thank you to you, Paul, and to Danya for, uh, for starting these podcasts. I think this is going to be a wonderful addition uh, to the resources that the journal is providing. So um, uh, before I went into medicine, uh, I was a math major and had always been interested in applications of mathematics and computer science uh, in, in medicine. And uh, when I found myself in radiology, I became really interested in ways that one could apply uh, various approaches to improve decision-making. And in fact, the, the very first project that I did in a research project in radiology was a tool to help guide referring uh, providers to the most appropriate imaging procedure and uh, use that as a way to take knowledge that was in a variety of reference sources and uh, turn it into something that people could act on. The idea being that um, you really need to bring knowledge to the source of decision making, uh, making it something that people can use as part of their day-to-day -day clinical practice and uh, I guess that's kind of what got me started down the road of working in AI. Yeah, that's um, really interesting. Um, I saw that you had um, actually gotten a master's in computer science in about 2003. Was that informed by your prior experiences and your interests in applying math and oh. <laughs> some of these technologies? Back, yeah, in, in, uh, after being in, in practice for about... Oh, about 20 years, I guess, I, I ended up taking a sabbatical year uh, during which I went and pursued a master's in computer science. And although I had done a lot of programming work, in fact, uh, I worked my way through uh, college and uh, through at least half of medical school up until hitting third year uh, clerkships and not having much time left over, but I, I'm doing computer programming, but I had never actually taken a computer science course. Um, mm. So it was really kind of a thrill uh, to step out of the clinical world of, of radiology for a little bit and to get uh, some training in the, in the foundations of computer science. So I um, actually kind of had three areas of concentration in that. One was bioinformatics. Um, one was theoretical computer science, and, and the third was uh, artificial intelligence machine learning. And uh, I, I thought all three of them actually were, were helpful to me in, in formulating some of the uh, ideas and, and helping to bring approaches to bear on some of the things that uh, I had been working on. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing all that. I think that that's a really unique background. And yeah, I think it's really rare to have a radiologist who has formal background in computer science and has had the experience early on with informatics and machine learning um, more specifically. So in light of that, um, when you look ahead at the next five to 10 years, what do you see as the most likely ways that AI might shape radiology, um, specifically and maybe medicine as a whole? 
Well, I, I truly believe that uh, the best way to predict the future is to 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 build it yourself. Um, it, it's uh, you know we really don't know where things are. I think well, I will tell you that radio or artificial intelligence is right now. Uh, everyone thinks of deep learning, which is a particular technique for machine learning, which has gotten a lot of attention. This is, um, this is the approach that allows us to recognize that a, uh, a picture is a cat rather than a dog uh, by right. training it with sets of images. But um, in fact, AI is so much broader than machine learning. Um, there's all these other aspects to it. And in fact, um, some of the technologies that we take for granted in, in much of what we do are actually things that have arisen out of the world of AI. Um, the uh, user interface that most of us deal with on our computers is a product of AI. Speech recognition, which uh, is there in Siri and Alexa and all these other technologies, um, that's uh, work that has grown out of the world of AI. So I think there, there's a, a huge opportunity, but in the, in the very early days of it, such as where we are right now, I think that uh, people have looked at AI and, and said, oh, this is going to push radiologists out of a job. There'll be no room anymore for, uh, for physicians uh, to be working in this area. Um, and I, 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 I don't believe that. I, I think in fact, AI is going to open up huge new opportunities for us. It's going to make it an exciting time for us to do these things. And I think it's um, going to really uh, create new vistas. And, and in some ways, I guess I, I look at it kind of the same as when uh, MRI was first introduced mm -hmm. and everyone said, well, we won't need pathologists anymore because we'll be able to diagnose tissue type right from the MRI. Um, there won't be a need for diagnosis because we'll know everything from the imaging. And it's, it's funny now to look at it some decades later and kind of realize how laughable some of those statements were. Um, but that was the feeling at the time. And in fact, we know now the, the limitations that, uh, that MRI has. And the, it's, it's a tremendously powerful tool, but it doesn't do everything. And there's still a role for us to help decide how best to apply it. And I guess I, I look at that in part as where some of the techniques with machine learning will be, um, that we'll be uh, uh, able to uh, drive, uh, drive forward and advance our abilities and improve diagnosis. Um, but it's, uh, I think people have yet to realize that all of these techniques have limitations to them and we have to be mindful of them. And in fact, it's going to be the radiologists who are going to uh, be best positioned to help understand those limitations and uh, help to protect our patients in a way um, by uh, recognizing those limits and, and assuring that the systems are used appropriately. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting um, thing to point out that, you know, though we think a lot about deep learning, as you mentioned, that AI really has been here for a while. And, um, you know, it sounds like uh, it really is incumbent on radiologists to take the lead and sort of write our um, future, as you mentioned. So in light of that, um, I want to talk about the Radiology AI Journal. I think this is one case where we're seeing radiology in the RSNA uh, specifically trying to be at the forefront of this. Can you tell us about the origins of the Radiology Artificial Intelligence Journal? Sure. And maybe how it came about? Well, so uh, as you probably know, we have uh, RSNA publishes, uh, has, has published two really extraordinary journals, one being the Gray Journal, Radiology, uh, right. which focuses primarily on science, and then Radiographics, which uh, provides educational content. And increasingly, we've been seeing uh, really a lot of very good content coming into radiology, but they have just had a limited page budget that they were, uh, that they were able to 
include along with the journal. And so uh, the RSNA uh, board decided to uh, craft three new journals, um, one of which is Radiology Artificial Intelligence, um, the other two being uh, Radiology Cardiothoracic Imaging and Radiology Imaging Cancer. And uh, all three of the journals launched in 2019. Radiology AI was the first one out of the gate. Um, and the, uh, the, our, the mission that's been given to us um, is to publish the same high quality of science, original research that is published in radiology with a focus for us on applications of artificial intelligence. And so that's the, the mission that we've, uh, we've taken on. And so we're, we're interested in, in publishing high quality work that describes applications of AI in radiology, and in particular showing the, the clinical benefit. Um, there are, I will say, a lot of publications of uh, various algorithms and mathematical techniques um, and various approaches that are out in the technical literature. But uh, as physicians, it's really important to us that we bring those techniques home and show how they impact the care of our patients. And that's what, what we seek to do in the journal. Yeah, I totally agree. It's really important that amidst all of the technological innovations and excitement, that it's really about how does this um, play out clinically. And so in that regard, um, do you think that research in AI differs from traditional radiology research? And if so, how? And on the converse, are there similarities that maybe we, some of us might take for granted or not necessarily assume uh, well, with traditional radiology research? That's a, that's a great question, Paul. They, in, in fact, much of the research that's been done in, uh, in AI, in machine learning, in radiology, really has focused on classification. It's right. being able to take a radiograph and to arrive at a diagnosis and to say, um, is, uh, is, is, you know, does this patient have a pneumothorax? Do they have a pneumonia? Is there cardiomegaly on a, a chest radiograph? And um, in that way, uh, the, the criteria that one applies to that work in, in terms of being able to judge the quality of the science really is very similar to that of any other technique. If I said to you, um, is CT better than ultrasound for diagnosing appendicitis? You'd say, well, I need a suitably powered clinical trial. I need a, you know, the right number of patients. I need to, to know that these things were read by uh, people who knew what they were looking at and all of the things that that go into that type of analysis really have to go into AI because the question is can you know can we pit the computer against in many cases a human observer um, there are some differences um, in that there are some aspects of AI and particularly because of the work that's done in deep learning deep learning involves um, hundreds of layers in these neural networks. I think all of us have from medical school in our minds the picture of the visual cortex and we can kind of get the idea that one can have connected layers of neurons um, and that's in many ways what, uh, what artificial neural networks seek to emulate. Um, and in the early days, because of the limitations of uh, computer capability, hardware, predominantly, you could have three or four layers of these neurons. Now we typically put together hundreds of layers of these things. And because of that, there are effectively millions of parameters um, that these models are learning. And this is one of the challenges for us. So um, when people build a model and then uh, proclaim that it functions well, we really need to have a mechanism uh, to understand exactly how they built that model so that we can assure that it has been uh, evaluated appropriately. And, and if I may, I, I will only mention as, as cautionary tale, I think um, sure. many, you know, um, 
some of our listeners may be familiar with stories um, about the, uh, the system that people developed to diagnose TB on chest radiographs. And they trained it with uh, sets of, of a large number of, of chest radiographs. And the, and the system demonstrated remarkably good performance until someone noticed that, one, that the images of patients who were positive were all coming from the TB clinic. And in fact, down at the bottom of the radiograph, stamped onto the radiograph, burned in digitally, it said TB clinic. And the computer in its wisdom had actually identified that and figured out that that was the feature that distinguished patients that had TB from those that did not. So all of these things, uh, and because of the, the, the potential for systems to learn features that are unintended, um, we, we have to just guard against that. And we have to be very careful and thoughtful about how we evaluate uh, scientific work that relates to applications of AI. In yeah, no, thank you for um, a really nice broad overview of how AI kind of differs as well as a similar to traditional radiology research. Um, in light of these special or um, nuanced considerations for AI research, um, such as finding these potential confounding factors and images, uh, can you comment on any standards for evaluating AI studies, both for reviewers um, evaluating studies for publication as well as for readers of these articles that sure. might be coming out? Well, it, it, typically there are a number of, of standards that people have used. One of them that's very common for um, studies of diagnostic accuracy that people may know of is STARD, S-T-A-R-D. Right. Um, other ones such as PRISMA and CONSORT that, uh, that are used for aggregations of, uh, of data and various clinical trials. Um, one that, uh, that we have published is called CLAIM, Checklist for AI in Medicine, or pardon me, in Medical Imaging, Checklist for AI in Medical Imaging, uh, C-L-A-I-M. And um, our goal is to articulate the particular aspects of machine learning models in particular that need to be described in order for uh, a reviewer and for a reader to really understand uh, the work that someone has done. And as with all areas of science, it's critically important that we uh, make sure that work is reproducible, that uh, when someone makes a scientific claim that it's not a, uh, uh, something that no one else is able to do. Uh, and, and that reproducibility is a key aspect of, of science. So we, we really have, have strived in formulating this, this checklist to provide to, to get authors to provide the information that's needed uh, to help reviewers and, and the journal readers uh, to understand the work that they've done and, and to have confidence in it. Because truly that's what we want to be able to do when, when you and I open up a journal and, uh, and read an article, we, we really want to know with a, a pretty good sense of certainty that the material that's provided there is is truthful and uh, is correct and is something that you and I can base our scientific investigations on or base our clinical decisions on. So it's, it's really critical for us as, uh, as, as readers of journals, as uh, contributors and as reviewers of journals to be able to, uh, to think critically about articles and to be able to have the information at our, at our fingertips to allow us to, uh, decide what's, uh, what's good science and what, what might need a little work. Yeah, I, um, I agree that these standards are really important for both transparency and also, like you said, upholding the quality that the RSMA journals have been known to um, uphold. Um, as we come to a close, um, I'd like to ask you about, you know, what are you personally most excited about for the next decade in AI and radiology or informatics or um, medicine in general? Well, I, yeah, well, that, that's a Paul. That's a great question. I honestly, um, 
I think we have an opportunity to use the tools of artificial intelligence to really help us improve the care of our patients. I think there, there is a phenomenal opportunity um, for us to uh, improve diagnostic accuracy, to be able to extend the use of imaging to answer questions we couldn't answer before. Some of the work that's being done in radiomics is uh, tremendously exciting where we're able to look at features that are not things visible to the human eye necessarily. I mean, all, you know, when we look at mammograms, for example, yes, we may look for nodules. We look to see if the margin is speculated and if uh, what the density of it is, but actually using uh, the characteristics, the information from the images, we can start to look at things um, that go beyond what, what the human eye can see. And in fact, um, I think this technology is, is tremendously exciting because it allows us to do virtual biopsies of tissues to, mm. that link the imaging phenotype, the patterns that we see in imaging, and to link that to actual uh, the genetics and the gene expression profile of lesions. And for people who have cancer, for example, where they may have, let's say, a colon cancer that has metastasized to the liver, each of the metastases to the liver may be somewhat different um, metabolically and, and in, terms of, uh, in terms of tissue and even within the lesion. So it allows us to really think about precision medicine. My, my personal thought, I'll just say real quickly, is I think sure. 10, 10 years from now, much of the work that we're doing in machine learning and AI, it's going to be kind of like where we are with CT and MRI. It's going to be a modality. It's going to be a tool that we recognize that's part of our armamentarium um, that helps us uh, better diagnose patients and manage them and contributes information. Um, I don't think it's going to replace us. I think it's going to, I think it's going to change what we do, but it's going to give us uh, new capabilities and open up some exciting vistas. And um, I think one of the things that we may see coming to the fore as a new aspect um, of artificial intelligence is in the area of robotics, actually. Um, hmm. And uh, I think that's where 10 years from now, some of the, uh, the excitement uh, may well be, but we shall see. Yeah, no, thank you for that. And um, as a closing uh, question, uh, what is one piece of advice you would give to radiologists either in practice or in training or interested in learning more about AI? Well, that's a great question. I, you know, I don't think, I've argued that we don't need everyone to learn uh, Python and, and uh, they don't, we don't need to turn radiologists into computer programmers. That's, that's not going to help. We really want radiologists to be physicians and consultants. But in the same way that we are trained in medical physics and we're able to converse with our physics colleagues, we really want ra the radiologist of the future to have enough understanding of AI and data science to be able to converse with data scientists because I think they're going to become important parts of uh, our radiology departments. And uh, AI is going to be a modality and in the same way that we have a medical physicist who checks the CT scanner every morning and does calibration and checks dose, we're going to have data scientists who check our AI algorithms and, and uh, make sure that uh, they're functioning properly and, and we as the physicians responsible for uh, the operations in our departments need to be uh, skilled and, and have enough understanding of the language of AI to be able to converse intelligently with them and, and assure that these things are working well for our patients. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Khan. Um, I just want to thank you for your time, for sharing your wisdom and experiences over the course of informatics, AI, about the journal and the future. Um, like, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And a uh, big thank you to the RSNA for uh, starting the journal, for uh, sponsoring this podcast, and to my uh, co-host, Tanya Day. And thank you, Paul and Chuck, for a great discussion. To our listeners, thank you for tuning in for our first episode uh, for the podcast series. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to our new Radiology AI uh, podcasts on any of iTunes, Google, 
uh, or Spotify. And please stay tuned for our next episode.